Hi guys, this is CyberDoc. Today I'm gonna make, well, I made this video, so I'm gonna show you how to do this iPad volume power ribbon cable replacement. So this is on, again, this is on iPad 2. So what happened here is the customer sending a uh, iPad 2 that has the ripped ribbon cable. This can happen when you're not careful or just, you know, there's too much glue on the glass digitizer. And when you're trying to take it off, uh, oftentimes it gets ripped apart because these cables are designed to be so fragile. And when you remove the LCD glass, it this can happen. And as a result, your volume button, more importantly, the power button for the iPad will not work. Uh, most likely, in this case, none of these buttons work. Most likely, you're going to break this little cable that you see next to a screwdriver and your power button for the iPad wouldn't work for iPad 2. So to do this repair, you can purchase ribbon cable. It doesn't matter where you get it, as long as you get the right part for iPad 2. And there's two screws, as you see, just taken off on this uh, metal shielding. Uh, that shielding is just there to secure the whole button. Other than that, I don't think it serves much of a purpose. You probably don't even need it. There's a side screw here. You Phillips screw, they're all Phillips screws, and you just take them apart with your Phillips screwdriver. There really isn't that much to it. I mean, aside from that, you want to be very careful when you do this repair because, again, the, the cable is very fragile, that's how the customer or you can break it in the first place. But the rest of it is just, you know, taking the screws apart and remember what they are and put them back together the way you found them. So there was a plastic piece. You, again, it's not really necessary to put it back, but you could put it back. Uh, it's secured the uh, camera. And there's a screw on top of the camera shielding. It's like a metal retainer that holds the camera down in place. Um, aside from, you know, be careful and putting everything back together, you can use a magnetic screw chart. Uh, the one I use is called Screwphilic. I designed it. So uh, it's called Screwphilic because it's, you know, it's a magnet, so it's Screwphilic. Oh, makes sense. Anyways, so we, we sell this uh, Screwphilic magnetic chart on our website, cyber.lc.com. If you like, you could use the chart just to sh it's just a good tool to keep all the screws in place on a magnet with the original picture of the iPad 2. That way you don't lose the parts or the screw placement when you disassemble it. So when you reassemble it, you don't really need to have a complete mental image and put it back together that way. And it, everything is on the chart. Uh, so that's something you, you could try. Um, so yeah, there's two screws here that holds the power button, which is a little bit tricky. It's in an angle of roughly 45 degree angle. Um, you want to be careful when you take these off. You don't want to wall out the, the, the groove of the screw. If you wall these out, then it's going to be hard for you to change this uh, power button. There are ways. If you break the screw, there are ways to get it out, but you don't want it get there. It's not a good way. Okay, so this is the part you want to be careful. Watch this video very carefully and remember the orientation for, well, this metal part is not important, or kind of important. The metal part is the orientation that goes in, and also this clip. Ideally, you don't want that to get it get out, the little ring thing, power button itself. Ideally, you don't want that power button to come out. You want to keep it in there, but if you did come out, you want to keep it in the same orientation that you took out with, or just match with this video. This video should come out in HD quality, so you should be able to see the orientation, and um, you should be able to see a very good like which which side of it's it's needed to be in there. And besides, there's only two ways to put it in, so if one way doesn't fit, just try the other way. It's not not a big deal. But I hope this video will be some help because I made like two of these previous videos and people have been complaining about how the angles are all wrong and I, I don't know, I'm not sure what they're talking about but 
Um, I'm doing my best with this video, putting the camera angle in front of my face when I did this, which is very inconvenient for this repair and it takes a little bit longer than I like due to the fact the camera is in my face instead of being uh, overhead on top of the devices. Okay, so pretty much, that's pretty much it. You took out the damaged parts, you know, you, you peel off the damaged ribbon cable that was originally taped double-sided onto the parts that you took out. And this part, you want to be relatively careful because you, you can damage the board underneath. Not that there's much to damage, but theoretically, you could do something, some kind of damage. And that board is, uh, I'm pretty sure it's irreplaceable unless you buy another iPad too. There's no generic product for the... A power board, I don't think. So, which will make it very expensive because you can only get it from, you know, broken iPad 2. How many broken iPad 2 are out there? A lot, but they, they charge a lot of money for it. Alright, so that's part of the ribbon cable I just currently ripped off from the video. Since this cable is already busted, you don't really care what happened to it. You could, you could do as much damage as you want. It's only to the cable. Now, this part is a little bit tricky. Most people don't realize this. There's a uh, FPC connector here. It is taped under that black tape that you all see. You see, like I'm, I'm trying to. Uh, camera is a little bit off angle now, but I'm peeling off on the upper right corner, peeling off the little um, tape, and you simply apply pressure up 190 degree and take out that FPC connector of the ribbon cable. So what you're gonna do now? You want to get your new ribbon cable and place it I, I like to start on the bottom first so um well, first of all you, you put the power button back I, I like to plug in fpc connector first and then work my way up So it will essentially be a reverse of what you just did to the uh, broken uh, ribbon cable. You will just be putting it back with a new one. The new ribbon cable you purchase is likely, well obviously it's coming from China at some point, and it's likely to have these uh, little, um, little double-sided tape tape to it. You could use them. They kind of get in the way sometimes, but they, 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 they need it. So don't peel them out before you... Um, actually putting it on, otherwise it's going to stick all over the place. Again, uh, this repair is very, the cable is very fragile like any other FPC cable, um, so be careful and be gentle with it. Some people mentioned this is kind of like surgery. Yeah, it is sort of, um, but unlike surgery, the, your patient doesn't really it's an iPad and it's not gonna die on you for no reason. If you do everything perfect, it's gonna work. Um, in real surgery, a lot a lot of crap can go wrong and even if you do everything perfect, the patient could still crap on you. So yeah, not exactly the same thing, but <laughs> similar, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll imagine. So um, microsurgery is similar. You use a tweezer, except the tweezer you use is much better than this um, tweezer. Tweezer is like fifty dollars for microsurgery, but anyway. Okay, this tweezer is not fifty dollars, and it's not as fun. So you you peel off, but it gets the job done. You peel off the double-sided tape slowly, and if your tweezer is not sharp, or you buy some crappy tweezer from God knows where you get it, you can sharpen it by using a grindstone. You know this the stuff that you um sharpen knives with and just patiently sharpen it, sharpen the tw a tweezer to a fine point that you like or a dull point that you prefer. Or you can you can buy microsurgery scissors for like $50, which I think is way overpriced, made in Germany. Or Japan, depends on where you buy your tweezer. I actually seen tweezer that was like $300 before. So that was interesting. Alright, so 
since I'm making this video from scratch, you're not gonna, I didn't have the luxury of having an orientation figure it out. But you doing this repair and watching my video, you hopefully you should get the orientation right from watching this video. So you have a little bit of advantage at the real assembly time here. Obviously, you'll be doing this repair much faster than I did in this video. I don't know. I, I, I have video done this for this before. I wasn't too lazy to look them up. I, I prefer to um just look at it, eyeball it, and visually memorize where everything was. And even if I don't, then you know, like right now in the video, I'm looking at it and figuring out what the heck did this thing get for? <laughs> but it's okay. Eventually, I figured it out at some point. So. Be careful, use tweezers or fingers. Um, you don't really need to wear a glove for this one or uh, in the static charge. As long as your battery is not plugged to the logic board. And honestly, for the iPad 2, the entire back, a new male friend, it's a metal heat sink. Well, not heat sink, sorry. Electric conductive sink. It's a ground. So whatever this charge you can get, it goes straight to the case anyway. You're not gonna generate any uh, meaningful electricity to damage anything at all. Especially these parts, if you know, battery is not plugging, obviously. Now this part can get damaged in, uh, with static electricity, I don't think. It's not gonna be strong enough. Even without the giant uh, ground of the case. Alright, so this, this part, again, be careful. These ribbon cable are incredibly fragile. I find that finger and nails are your best friend in this sort of repair. Okay, so in this aspect, it was kind of like surgery, and, and unlike surgery, you don't need to wear uh, surgical gloves. So you can actually f uh, feel these little parts with your fingers without any gloves on. Uh, nails helps, so grow your nails. Grow it to a level that you can use. And if you're a, uh, a girl, you're watching this. I don't know how how um, fake paste, you know, like glue on nail, nail will work for this, but maybe it helps. I don't know. I never tried it. I don't have glue on nail, so I wouldn't know. I probably would never know. <laughs> but uh, if it works well for you with glue on nail, let me know. Um, that's interesting. Not that I'm gonna try, but it's something interesting to know. Okay, so basically get the orientation right, watch this video, or take a mental image when you do this repair. Then just peel off the tape, whatever you need to peel it off, and tape it back. Uh, fit everything back into its place, its proper place. It should uh, click right out. And watch the, um, the volume button. Make sure the little lock, you see the little lock, it's aligned with the volume button. Uh, this is the most annoying part. You want this part to be in the right orientation when you put it, because there's two ways to go in. Uh, it's either, you know, funnel back. And if you don't remember which form of that, you could, you know, simply just, you know, plug in and try. I mean, you want a 50-50 chance of getting it right. Getting it wrong. So, the 50-50 chance is going to get it right. Or watch this video and do what I did. This part always gets me. Like, uh, putting the power button back, since this is pretty much the primary reason why you're doing this repair in the first place, the power ribbon got rebuffed. And it's just hard to paste uh, this power ribbon cable align the frame perfectly the way that they intended to. Um, but it's okay. The camera, it's they can live with like loose cable. Um, it's not gonna affect the connectivity or the cable as long as you don't break it and the, the camera can can go around it it, it could make it could live just fine it will work 
this is the part you want to be careful. Like you want to make sure you know the orientation, or like. So it will speed out your repair, and you don't have to redo this later. Um, I guess my I never had this problem. Like I never break a new cable. But my advice would probably be for people who's new to this: um, get two of these ribbon cables when you attempt to do this repair for the first time and never had a successful, you know, I mean, this particular repair or it's just not good with small objects, you might rip open um, one of them. And it's just very frustrating waiting for parts to come, I know, I know. Um, you want to do the repair, it's, it's fun, you got the weekends and you got everything apart, but the parts you bought it either didn't work or you broke it and then you need another one. You break it, you need another one, and it's annoying that you only have one. <laughs> so always buy spares just in case. It's worth it. I mean, you have fun, so it's worth it. So at this point, I just give up the gloves. Um, screw the gloves. I am not doing surgery. I don't need to be sterile. There we go. Seriously, those surgeon has a good in like 50 years ago. They didn't need to wear, or well, maybe 80 years ago, they didn't need to wear gloves or anything. But then again, they're getting infected with a bunch of weird stuff. So never mind, gloves are good. Gloves are best friend. But in electronics, as long as you don't get shocked to death. Or getting lead poison, or um, okay, you get a lot of weird stuff in electronics too. But or you're making static charge and breaking us uh, really sensitive CPUs. I guess what else can get break for electric discharge these days? I don't know. Wear gloves. You don't need a wear glove for this one. No, this repair you could you could do it without gloves, unless you have really sweaty fingers or fat fingers. Okay, so you put these two screws back. Again, you can get the uh, screw fillet chart from our website, cyber.lc, if you want to use it to track these screws. It is a lot of screws, and uh, they're all different sizes, believe it or not. <laughs> and every single one of these screws are different sizes. I don't know what Apple is doing when they design this. They're probably just doing this on purpose to, um, hmm, I wonder how I can make this more difficult to everybody. Ah, right, making different sizes of screws. So, yes, you want to get those magnetic charts. Um, it doesn't matter where you get it, I mean, you can get it from, like, us, or you get it from somebody else, but I think we are the only people selling iPad 2, I could be wrong, we are the only web store selling iPad 2 um, magnetic screw charts right now. Oh, well. So putting the camera back and putting the pl uh, metal clip, you don't really need this clip, but whatever, I'm putting it back because I have no other use for the clip otherwise. So yeah, this is the screw chart. Um, it's called screw fillic, screw fillic, felicity, fillic, screw loving, and you can put all these screws back in the proper location and the chart is it's much bigger than a uh, regular iPad or it's it's relatively the same size so if not bigger that way you can put all these little chunk parts like the uh, camera, camera retainer right on its original location on the picture of the chart um, you don't need to worry anything on iPad or iPhone, honestly, any Apple product to be damaged by magnets. For first of all, these magnets are not that strong. They compare to the to the rare earth magnet you have on iPad and your magnetic case, by the way. The entire iPad is a giant magnet. So if your sensitive parts on it first of okay, surface mount stuff don't you don't need to worry about magnets. The only thing you worry about magnet is a spinning hard drive, and Apple haven't had a spinning hard drive since the iPod second generation. 
uh, the iPod video, fifth generation. So, yeah. And only when it's on. When it's off, that you can put as much, well, yeah, when it's off, you can put as much magnet on those things as well. Okay, so I digress again. Anyways, these three screws are kind of um, tricky. You don't want them too tight. I don't know why, again, we are designed, but Apple designed in such a way that you don't want these screws to be too tight. You want it to be tied on, but not tight, just loose. Otherwise, the volume button will not work. The whole button will work regardless how tight you tighten the screw, but the, you can try this. You can tie these three screws really, really, well, not really tight, but really tight, and then the volume button would will not click. Like, you want to keep these at least this lower two button, uh, two screws, for the screws, to be relatively loose. And okay, not yeah, relatively loose, not loose, but just there and not tight. You get my point. So these tested and um, these two volume buttons will work perfectly. It's a little weird, but I don't know why this is, but this is how it is. Somebody thought it was funny to do it this way when they designed it. Or maybe there was um, there was just an off in measurement when they did this design. Who knows? I wonder what I'm doing here. I'm taking it apart again. Hmm. It must be that the, the buttons I'm not glued to the right spot. I got it. I right, see one of the buttons loose. It's not glued on properly. No problem. Just you know, just be careful, be gentle. And knowing the fact that you're not doing real surgery, your patient is not gonna die on you. You can do this as long as you want, there's no time cut off and you don't have your attending next to you um um you know scare you. <laughs> so take your time, just get it right. Actually that's that's the same thing in real surgery. Take your time, get it right. Don't rush it and don't break anything. Yeah. That's the best advice I got. Take your time. I'm, I'm relatively impatient, so I do want to make it fast. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, if you do things fast, you can learn from your mistakes, and the next time you do it better, if you don't make that mistakes, then um, you do it faster. Fortunately, you can do stuff fast on iPad. If you break something, just replace it. Not a big deal. They all, well, the most part you can break are pretty cheap. Know what you can break and what you cannot break. Oh, wait, is that why I took it off? Because I forgot the retainer clip? Mm, no, I think it's mostly the ribbon cable. The, the, uh, the volume button, the up, up volume button was in the wrong location. So I retaped it. So yeah, um, then you put the right size screws back. They all again, they all different sizes. Get get a screw chart. I don't care where you get it. Get one for this, and put the screw back right. Otherwise, it's just gonna be a headache. Okay, I can I can kind of see how this repair can be difficult. I actually don't understand why people um have difficulty with this repair. I guess I can see now like there's there's certain tricks that um. You, you can run in like problem in, into, for example, the um, FPC cable. You could you could not know there's a FPC connector there and break it, or the orientation of the power button, and finally the the placement of the volume button and the fact that the all these screws are different, and especially for the volume button, uh, all those three screws you need to loosen when you tighten it. You don't want to tie it too tight. Which we usually do. We tie the tie, and that's our intu intuition, and that's not that's not a good thing for those three screws for the volume button. 
Uh, you can you can either keep this or throw it out. I don't know. I if it was like my iPad, I would just throw it out. I think this that is completely useless. It's not even design, right? <laughs> This is what we call an appendage. Five. It looks like an appendage. I have a lot of respect for these, um, you know, this uh, workers in China that assemble these. <laughs> This stuff in the first place. I mean, they must be having so much patience and very good eyesight. Um, these are annoying. These little, little teeny mini things, and they have to do like a billions of these, millions and millions of every other other month or week for almost little or no pay. So every time when you do repair on your eye, uh, eye devices or you're, you're using an iPhone, iPad, whatever. Just, just be thankful for all these people who um, who assemble your stuff for you for almost no pay. Without them, you would not be able to afford this for five hundred dollars. iPad will not cost only five hundred. I would imagine if you built this in the U.S. or if you, you know U.S. labor uh, minimum wage cost, this will probably be running at. Five thousand range, five thousand dollars, three thousand dollars to five thousand dollars, and that's think about it, that's what happened when the first computer came out. It was made in US. It was far less complicated than iPad, um, and easier to build. And how much was it cost? Five thousand dollars, right? A first one computer was like three thousand, five thousand dollars, and that's and that was back then. And money used worth like after without inflation, money was much less. So. Five thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollars back then. Now it's probably ten thousand dollars in equivalent. Uh, maybe in the last, I mean, like seven thousand, eight thousand dollars. So if you imagine without this Chinese worker working so hard for you, you have to pay eight thousand dollars on iPad. Uh, that's crazy. Apple will go out of business. iPad like eight thousand dollars a pop. Yeah. So big thankful. That goes with everything you use every day. It's just, yeah, we, we should be grateful with what we have. Okay, so the power button works. You plug in, you plug, you, um, this is the most gratifying part, the most awesome part of the repair. You press the button and the button, the, well, the power turns on. And you can test it by turning it on, turning it off, turning it on, turning it off, turning it on. Blah blah blah. Now, if the power button works, the volume probably works as long as the button clicks, because the cable has to go through the power button before it gets to the volume. Yada yada yada. You get my point. Um, yeah, rambling on a lot. It's just I feel uncomfortable with watching these videos and not talk at the same time. So I just keep on talking. I feel in the, the empty silence. But anyways, um, thank you for watching. I will see you next time. This is our website uh, for more videos and add me on your channel so you could watch more repair video from me or just hear me talking about random nonsense. See you next time. Bye.